Hey, fam fam. Um, we have a busy day today. This is our second recording of the day. So we're excited that you guys get to hear so many <laughs> awesome guests this season. Um, we recorded today with Katie Von Till, who was introduced to us through Jenna Doolittle. If you remember, she talked, she talked a, a lot about SAG AFTRA and the benefits of being a union actor. And she also has the Actors Rise newsletter. If you haven't subscribed yet, reach out to us. We can you connect do you. It. Yes. But uh, Katie, that we talked to today, she's an actress. She's also produced. And she knows a whole lot about SAG contracts, <laughs> which is why we wanted to bring her on today. Because sag after we're learning more and more about from the actor's perspective. But from the filmmaker's perspective, there's so much to know, too. Because, you know, if you want to have a union project, you've got to decide what contract to file that project under. And so we learned a lot today talking to her about what contract you might want to file under that they, that that can change and just so many things and so many benefits of making your project union. Yeah, I feel like there were, she really demystified a lot of, you know, just thoughts that I had around what the, the SAG after contracts could look like or maybe restrict us as the producers from and as far as like just coming out of the actor perspective but from a producer it, it can feel overwhelming and and she really just put us the word would be relief yeah. she really yeah. put us at ease and she brought a lot of relief and so um yeah if, it, it if you're listening in we certainly you know we we kind of go back and forth from the actor filmmaker perspective but um it really is this this ecosystem that we're living in together so definitely tune in there's going to be moats uh there's going to be points from you'll hear from both sides so you have a better understanding. And I think it's really important yeah. as a filmmaker to understand both sides and realize, yeah, we're it, it's going to work like it's going to work out for you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and to go film the project. Yeah, because we always talk about how, you know, you have to learn to, to wear the multiple hats and blah, blah, blah. But even if you're not, even if you are one hat, <laughs> you still have to understand how the other things work and how it all works together. Because, you know, without actors, you don't have a movie. Without filmmakers, you don't have a movie. Without everybody, exactly. you don't have a movie. So. Exactly. So I just, if you're tuning in and then it starts to feel like, oh, this is sounding like an actor episode, like, you know, from the past, it, it's not, it, it covers everything. And um, it was really, really relieving to hear a lot of the things that Katie said, and she's just awesome. So um, make sure you guys vote for her if you're in SAG. Yes, if you so, are a SAG union after. actor, um, make sure A, that you're voting, um, which oh, yeah. we'll get into uh, in hello. the episode like, <laughs> as to why that's important and everything. But she's running for a position, and I don't know, the little that I have gotten to know her, she sounds amazing at that. Like She just really <laughs> volunteers because it is something she's really passionate about. So make sure you go out and vote, and we will remind you. And if you're not union... Don't worry about it then. You can't vote yet. But <laughs> something to think about for when you do make that, that next step. When you do. It's just as important. Yeah. All right, y'all. Enjoy. Tell us a little bit, yeah, about your actor journey. And I feel like there must have been a strong, and you can, you know, feel free to say it, but a strong reason why you wanted to to join the board and well to 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 be such a part of SAG and be part of the nominee yeah. or I'm sorry negotiating committee and the yeah negotiation. what basically led you from just a union actor to that point and everything in between <laughs> oh we're, we're just gonna go right into SAG after huh? okay um well uh I gosh that's just a crazy question. So I didn't know as an actor early on, I didn't really understand what the union did, mm -hmm. what the union was. Um, I grew up in, I'm Gen X, and I grew up in a time when, you know, there was a lot of media push about like, you know, powerful labor unions and corrupt labor unions. So I just didn't really have a good sense about uh what a union does and why someone would, would need one. 
um, I, of course, joined the union because that's what you did. You, you, you got out of school. I went to Michigan State, so studied theater there. You got out yes. of school. You got your eligibility. I actually joined equity first, um, you know, and I did that by crashing equity calls. I would crash <laughs> equity calls until finally, you know, at, at, there was space and they would see me and I, and I booked a job and I got my eligibility. And I actually joined SAG, uh, was not yet SAG after mm. I joined in 2001 when I moved to Los Angeles. And the way I joined was through Actors Equity because you can become eligible through a sister union. So that's what I did. So I actually have never done non-union television or film. Oh, wow. Never done it. Wow. I did one day as an extra before I joined uh, as on a SAG after film. Uh, but as a non-union background, because they only have to have union background up to a certain cap, mm -hmm. right? Up to a certain uh, minimum, so to speak, actually. And so they were looking, it was a big, you know, auction scene in this movie. And they were looking for people. I was living in New York at the time. And someone said, oh, you, sh you should do a job like that just to see what it's like, just to get on set, see what it's like to work in background or whatever. So I, I did that. Um, but other than that, I never, I never did a non-union commercial. I never did a non-union film or reenactment television show. I, I never did any of that stuff. I, I joined the union and then my very first um, union SAG, SAG at the time audition I booked. Nice. So I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> um, this is really easy. And I understand that's not everybody's experience. Um, also, I kind of have a backwards career where I did well theatrically before I did well commercially mm -hmm. which is kind of backwards I also did well in voiceover before um I did well commercially so I I've had you know like we say that there's no clear path right so just like everybody else I've had my own experience my own wayward way to get where I am now yeah. but basically I you know once I started working union jobs and so forth I like many actors <laughs> I had an issue with getting properly paid for a job and I went through mm -hmm. the claims process and I said at the time, I think it was said, no, it was already said after, you know, got my money from me, but I was angry that I had to even chase down this mm -hmm. money. So I was like, what is going on over there? I'm mad. <laughs> and uh, they have like a town hall about the proliferation of non-union commercials and once I went over there and started listening to, um, you know, getting a little bit of education of what was going on, I realized, oh, I, I don't know anything. I need to start showing up to, to meetings, seminars, uh, what are called the W and W's, which are the wages and working conditions, which are mm. uh, the meetings that happen before a contract negotiation mm. to talk about what things are working or not working in the contract. And I learned so much about what a negotiation means, what a union really does for you, uh, why, why these protections are needed, and who are we, quote unquote, fighting against or bargaining with, depending on the bargaining partner, um, and why, and, and how, how do we get something that works for everybody, mm -hmm. right? Because actors are always like, oh, I want more, I want more, I want more. But what ends up happening is we end up pricing ourselves out of the market. And the next thing you know, they're like, nah, we're just going to do non-union. And then it becomes a race to the bottom, right? Because there's no floor with non-union. So it's like, mm, this girl will do it for 500. This girl's just as good. She'll do it for $25 and a uh, IHOP gift right. card. Um, yeah. And that's not a joke. There was an IHOP <laughs> commercial that offered a $25 gift card for people to be in a national commercial. Wow. In a national I commercial? I know. Oh it's so God. gross. It's so, so gross. So yeah, I basically realized... Once I started showing up that I had a lot to learn and that I also had a lot to give uh, because I do have a sort of, I've heard you guys talk to Jenna. I have a type A mind mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm really good with contracts and things like that. Legalese is not um, a deterrent for me. So it was a good fit. I also have a problem saying no. So when people <laughs> ask me to do things, I, I do yeah. them and I give up all my free time, whether that's the best thing for me or not. <laughs> And I think it's also, it's like, it's inspiring to hear that that worked for you because, you know, a lot of times we're told as actors, don't join the union until you're ready, which, you know, can be. I don't understand what that yeah. means because my opinion is this. If you're eligible, if you were able to get your eligibility, mm -hmm. you're ready. Mm -hmm. 
If you have the $3,000 to join, join. Yeah. People always say, when should I join? When you have $3,000 and you're eligible. Mm-hmm. The end. <laughs> yeah, I love that. The mindset. end. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't understand. Put off for what? Right. Well, I think to be on the other side, like there are certain jobs that, you know, if, because it's a very competitive union, you're, you know, you're with everyone that it, it can maybe be scary to people like, oh, I might not keep booking. And if I'm consistently booking as a non-union actor, maybe this is nice for a while. Like maybe this is like the market right now, commercially word on the street, non-union is great for commercial auditions. Yeah. So here's what I have to say about that. (laughs) Yeah. I would love to hear what you have to say, Miss Katie. Do you want to make money as an actor and not have to have a side hustle? Exactly. Mm. How, how do you, what kind of jobs allow you to do that? Union, yeah. union commercial Correct. jobs. Right. Now, what happens if before you join the under uh, join the union, you undermine the union? Mm. Mm. Do you want those big jobs to be available when it's your turn to get right. them? Right. 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 Your faces. You're like, oh. No, so, I, I. I'm just speaking. I'm yeah, not even saying yeah, like these are my personal thoughts and feelings. Just for anyone listening, yeah, and like I, where my mindset was at one point. Yeah. You know, I'm like, yeah, what the I, heck? I think you have to ask yourself like, who who's saying those things to you? What what's in their best interest mm-hmm. for it? It's usually your agent who's taking twenty and twenty. Right? They're getting a twenty percent fee from you, and they're getting a twenty percent quote agency fee, which is BS. Um, to mm-hmm. to you know, keep you in that pocket, yeah. right? It's easy money for them and they make money off of volume, right? So right. you have to ask yourself, do they have your fiduciary interests in mind or their own, mm-hmm. right? And then again, you have to think about, well, I want the union to exist because I want those big jobs when it's my turn. Right. So right. what I say to actors starting out is, you know, absolutely take those like reenactment shows and do some non-union films and, you know, you can, you can keep doing student films even when you, you are in the union. You know, do all of those things. Make your own stuff. But when it comes to commercials, what I would say is don't take a job that should be a union job. Mm-hmm. What do I mean by that? Don't do a, don't do a Coke commercial. Do a, you know, La- Lacey's Bridal of Baltimore. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like something, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Something that might not be union ever. There's, there's always been non-union commercials. Mm-hmm. Some people say, oh, there's non-union commercials. There's always been, you right. know, not as high a percentage as there is now, but they've always existed, right. Mm-hmm. right, for those smaller advertisers. So what I would say is, you know, pick, pick those products that, that aren't really going to hurt the larger labor movement. Mm-hmm. And what I would also say is, you know, we're, we are part of the larger labor movement. You, you can't say like, oh, I support the United Auto Workers, but I don't support the Actors Union. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, we're all part of the the labor movement in this country. And, you know, the PRO Act is going through Congress right now about, you know, supporting workers' rights to organize. And so you have to think about, it's not just you. It's not just actors. It's all workers. And what befalls right. one union can befall another. So you have to think about the entire labor force of this country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a, like a different take on it that I think a lot of people like don't think about that. Like think about the bigger oh, picture, no. you know? Yeah. yeah I, didn't, I didn't either. But like I said, because we were raised, it's like, it's like corrupt labor unions. Yeah. You know, you mm-hmm. think about like, you know, the mob or whatever, you know, burying Jimmy Hoffa and some concrete <laughs> or whatever. You know, that's what that's what you, you think. And then you realize it's without the union, who's going to go get my money? Mm -hmm. Who's going to make sure I'm compensated fairly for my work? Who's going to give me residuals so I can make money even when I'm not working? Mm -hmm. Who's providing me with a pension and health care? You know, obviously you have to make a certain amount of money to get those things, but that's the only way for those things to exist in this profession. Yeah. So if I want the kind of stability that, that other workers, other laborers have, in acting, this is the only way to have. Yeah. And I love, I just want to like re-highlight for listeners um, what you were saying about like undermining the union really by taking certain yeah. jobs that are non-union and shouldn't be, you know, I mean, that's something that 
I don't think I really fully realized until more recently um, because I've been eligible for years now and I for a long time thought, you know, oh, I got to wait till I'm ready, whatever. And I've more recently come into the fact that I was like, okay, I'm ready. I've got the money saved. Like next project that's union, let's go. Oh, yeah. But it was was a lot of, you know, mindset changing and stuff. And that was one really big Mm -hmm. thing was like, if I or anybody keeps taking these non-union jobs that aren't giving us what we deserve, that aren't paying us what they should be, all of that, like, that's going to screw over the union jobs, you know? That's going to mean they're that's never right. going to be unions. So, yeah, I think that's just that's really right. important to highlight for people that don't realize <laughs> Yeah, that. it's it's huge. Yeah. And, and you know, I didn't either early in early in my career, to be fair. I didn't – it just wasn't something that, what I, that I thought about. Mm-hmm. But you also have to remember, I came up, you know – podcasts weren't a thing when when I came up and you know it was it was a lot harder to sort of get this kind of information social media wasn't a thing right. yet and now it's sort of like there's when you know better you do better mm-hmm. and it's yes. a lot easier now to know better if that makes yeah. sense like the the access to the information is a is a lot easier to find yeah I want to now like pivot this to producer filmmaker mode because we talked a lot with Jenna about acting Mm -hmm. and the actors but it's like kind of a just if we could candidly and you might not have all the answers that you know we understand but I think it it gets a little trippy as like to these SAG the new SAG low budget um contract indie contract you mean the micro budget yeah the micro budget Mm -hmm. indie low budget (laughs) micro low budget indie contract and then like the difference between that and then the ultra low like budget because we're we're looking at producing a, our next film in like the twenty thousand dollar range right, right. And so that's twenty thousand and lower would be the micro budget mm-hmm. right so everything is based whichever basically whatever your budget is there is a contract for you to use and they are okay. based on budget okay right so if you're 20 grand and under you can use the micro budget but you can also use uh, sorry you can use the micro contract you can also use the short project agreement mm. you can mm. also use the um, new media agreement depending on uh, you know where your material is going to go what platform it's going to end up on and you said to yourself well I want to use the micro agreement because xyz but the micro budget agreement doesn't pay into pension and health mm. so you might say to yourself well I have enough in my budget to pay into pension and health for actors out of this total budget even if it is only 20 grand because who knows maybe the rest of your budget is like nothing because you're shooting in your house so mm-hmm. you're only paying actors I don't know um, you might want to use a different contract that is a little bit more complicated and has more paperwork, but allows you to pay into um, those actors' pension and health. Okay. Makes sense. So, yeah, okay. I think for yeah. us... But everything is based on budget. Everything yeah. is based on budget. Okay. That's what I think for us, like, we've been so confused about all the other details about the different contracts. For instance, for mm-hmm. this feature that we're writing, um, we had, based on budget, assumed that we would go with the micro budget one however I see in there that it's um it can't be a commercial project i.e like it's only for festivals or to be available to be streamed for free like you can't make money off of it is kind of what I got Mm -hmm. out of the contract so Mm -hmm. I guess we're wondering like what's an alternative to that does it exist at that level of budget and kind of I guess yeah there's the new media agreement the short project agreement there's there's for any scenario that you have there's something that will fit for, will fit you. And mm-hmm. if you have any issues, you know, you can always call the union and, and someone will help you. They're not always right. <laughs> uh, because I, I hate to say it, but our staff are humans and they're not perfect either. Uh, I had them steer someone toward a micro budget agreement when they should have steered them toward new media. Mm-hmm. It does happen, but you know, there are resources there. You, you can always reach out to me. You can reach out to Jenna. You can reach out to, um, I don't know if you know, uh, there's an organization called We Make Movies. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they've they've got a great handle on all the contracts. Um, there's there's resources out there to help you finagle your way through everything. But there's something for every budget. If you want to make something, there is something that will work for you. I promise. Yeah. Okay. I've produced, that... tw- I've produced twice um, feature-length films. Uh, one under the new media uh contract uh and because we went we ended up going to like itunes and things like that and then i recently Mm. uh have one right now that's in post that we did under the ultra low budget agreement Mm -hmm. 
And then I've worked as an actor under the modified low budget agreement. <laughs> I mean, there's literally, it runs the gamut. Yeah. When you're dealing with uh, what budget you fit into, a lot of people are currently worried about the um, COVID yeah. issues and the extra money that puts onto your budget. None of that counts toward the tier you fall into. Oh, That money is taken out. So it doesn't count toward your budget cap. Okay. So the money you have to spend on COVID testing and PPE and getting a COVID officer and all that stuff isn't actually part of your budget. You can take okay. that out. So a lot of people are like, oh, I can't do this, this movie because with the COVID costs, it's going to put me above X budget, X, Y, Z. It doesn't. It's Good not going to bump, wow. it won't bump you up a tier. So I think it's really important for filmmakers to know that right now. Cause a lot of people I think are abandoning projects mm-hmm. thinking, well, if I put, if I put a COVID budget in here, it bumps me up to the next project yeah. and then that bump and then that next contract and then the next contract makes everything more expensive and now I can't do it. Yeah. So just huge, keep in mind that huge. COVID stuff does not count toward your budget. Okay. Good to know. Well, that's good to know that that is options. really important. Yeah, Yeah, that's really important, I think, for filmmakers to hear on the show Mm because majority of our our listeners are filmmakers. And like, I think the contracts can feel really scary and like not, you know, not sure how to approach it. Here's what I'll say. They're not complicated, Mm -hmm. but they're they can be time consuming. Mm -hmm. Um, I produced a web series under the new media agreement years ago and. I remember just being frustrated with how much paperwork there was. Yeah. And this was for something that was non-commercial. I wish the micro-budget agreement had a, had existed then, but it didn't. How, why does it exist now? Because people come to us like you guys and say, hey, this doesn't work for me. And, you know, it's like anything else, adapt or die, right? Yeah. So we adapt. We adapt. We come up for ways to make it work for everybody. Because I think a lot of people think that SAG-AFTRA is trying to – fight with the producers of content and no we we want employers yeah so we (laughs) we want we want to make you know it 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 as easy as possible um as as attractive as possible as affordable so to speak as possible so that we can keep employers. If we don't have any employers, all of this is for naught. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter how great our contracts are if no one's using them. Yeah. So you have to have things that are usable. And I think sometimes, you know, I'm the national chair of the Commercial Performers Committee, and I was on the negotiating committee. And I think sometimes, I do think it's actually hurt my career a little bit because I feel like casting directors are less likely to call me in because I think they think I'm going to narc on them. Mm. Like if they do something <laughs> wrong, and I'm like... I'm not going to narc on you. Like, I want to know, like, if something isn't working for you, I'm not going to be like, it's I want to, I want to, I want to, <laughs> yeah. I want to figure out how we can fix that. Yeah. You know, there are a few casting directors who fortunately will actually call me with issues and problems, um, which is really nice. But a lot of them are just sort of like, oh, I had somebody referred to me once as Mrs. Union. Oh, Mrs. Union. And it's like, <laughs> oh. oh, no, I, I'm really trying to make this work for for everybody. Cause again, yeah. we want employers, we want jobs, we need them. Yeah. And that's why conversations like this are so important because so that like important. stupid stigma that gets put on things is so not true, you know? It's so kind of bananas to me, Yeah, it's, but it's like, we all want to work. Like I want you to work. I want the casting directors to work. I want the producers to work. Like I want everybody to make money and pay their bills. Yeah, totally. So I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Um, and let me ask too, almost from like a, I hate to say this, but devil's advocate position too. Sure. So like as far as the union contracts, again, for the filmmakers, if you're yep. a filmmaker who's not an actor, you, you know, you, so you don't really care about the union in that way. Like kind of what um, benefits, I guess, do you get for making your project a union project as a filmmaker specifically? Well, what do you mean by a filmmaker? A producer or a director or what are you talking about? Um, I guess producer specifically. Um, talent. Yeah. You get the best talent. Mm -hmm. And let's be real. Um, names Mm -hmm. sell projects. Absolutely. Names are in the union. Yeah. You know, what's going to help you get financing. You know, what's going to help people invest in your, in your project. Legitimate actors with legitimate credits. Yeah. That's the benefit. Totally makes sense. That's you know, if you want if you want your film mm-hmm. to disappear into oblivion, 
Go right ahead. Yeah. Could you be that, you know, gem that has all non-union is and breaks through? Absolutely. How often does that happen? Right. And how much content is being made now? Yeah. The competition is so much higher. I mean, forget it. Right. There's more content made in the last month than in the last 35 years. <laughs> That's true. So you got to figure so out your ways true. to break through. So how do you, how do you, you do that? You know, you attach names, whether that's a name director or a name writer or name producers or name talent, mm -hmm. right? It's the same sort of thing. Like people look at your project and go, oh, that gal, that gal's on Young Children. I love her. I'll, I'll, I'll give you $5,000. Yeah. Yeah. That's the benefit. That makes sense. And that's no, an that's easy so answer. Great. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I love that you asked that, Tessa, because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, sometimes, yeah, again, that's not ever really spoken. So, you know, to your benefit to have those people. Right. right. If you get a if right. you get a name actor in your that's just going to help you sell your project to festivals. Mm -hmm. It's going to help you sell your project to streaming services. It's going to help sell your project to investors. That's you know, you can have the most amazing script on the planet, but if 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 it never gets off the ground because you can't make any money to, to make it, yeah. then what good is it? Yeah. I think that's important to mention too. It's like the name isn't just making actual sales of your movie. Like it is selling you from the very beginning to investors. Like you said, Correct. you know, like it's, it's a, a tool for sure. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's why yeah. a lot of, you know, you hear about a lot of movies getting off the ground or greenlit because an actor's been attached, mm -hmm. right? And that goes right. all the way up to like big giant studio films with A-list actors to student films. You'd see, you surprise how many student films, like if you go to a USC uh, <laughs> uh, student film, their thesis uh, film festival mm -hmm. stuff or exhibitions at the end of each graduating class, uh, you're going to see name actors in their stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you it's, you're gonna see actors that's, with credits. That's yeah. impressive. That's mm -hmm. like wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're gonna see actors with credits mm -hmm. in their projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> okay. I love, I love. You just see you guys is yeah, like the wheels <laughs> turning in your head. You're like thinking, thinking, thinking. I think especially for us too, because we are in development of our first feature right yeah. now too. So it's like beyond just like these questions to know for us to just have knowledge of. It's like, we're like yeah. specifically applying them to this project as well. Yeah. Yes. I, you know, I've produced a few things now and pr my hat is off to you. Producing is really, really hard. Um, my personal thought is I enjoy producing more when I'm not acting a big role in the project. Mm -hmm. So the two features I've produced, I've played, very tiny roles. Mm -hmm. One scene in one, I think two scenes in another. Really, really tiny. Uh, because I think sometimes we can overextend ourselves. Um, and if you wear too many hats, sometimes something can fall by the wayside. Mm -hmm. not, that's not to be said, we shouldn't wear all the hats. That's how I've survived in this business. I wear all the hats. <laughs> yeah. I diversify, yeah. right? I do voiceover. I do uh, I do all kinds of voiceover. I do on-camera work. I do commercials. I do TV and film. I started out in stage. I started out in musical theater. Um, you know, that's how I've survived in this business because when one thing is tanking for me, something else pops up. So I, I, I do want people to do that, but there can be another danger to that, which is sort of like, you know, the jack of all trades, master of none, right? right? Sometimes I feel like people who are very singularly focused, um, have a better shot at pushing ahead in that, in that particular thing. So it's a matter of like risk reward. Yeah. Right. And for me, it's about survival because I don't care about being famous. I, I actually would rather not be really famous. Yeah. I, I know some people who are really famous and it's like, they can't go to target. Right. You know, I, I like, I, not that I really like going to Target, but I like to go to Trader Joe's, you know, and, and I like to be out in the world. Yeah. So, um, I like to go out to dinner with my friends and not be interrupted every five minutes. So I, I think that for me, that's not a goal, but for some people that is. And so I would say, well, then, then pick your lane. Is it for you, Carolina? Oh, I, I'm the jack of all trades and I throw myself in the crazy, but I like thrive on it. Like I, mm -hmm. I, even in the, like chaos i'm i'm not but that's like people have different personalities and can work at different yeah so paces for me and, that works for me too right i do yeah. all the things but for somebody else yeah. um it's probably not good because we have a limited bandwidth and i think that's for sure that people 
forget. It's like you can go and go and go and go. And after a time, it kind of feels like you're spinning your wheels. Yeah. Like I'm doing all of this and nothing is changing. So mm. it can be really hard when that happens. So I don't know. I'm double-sided. I would, I would have said, if you'd asked me five years ago, I would have been like, diversify, 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 diversify. And now I think there's an argument for the other side as well. And I think it's all, I think, like Caroline, yeah. like you said, it's people, people are different. So I think it's figuring out what works for you too. You know, like try all of these different things, see what sticks, yeah. see what you're able to do at the same time. You know, like maybe mm-hmm. you are pursuing producing and you are pursuing acting but not on the same projects or you know whatever works for you and also just be really clear what is your goal what like what's the ultimate goal and where do you see and this is going to be here's where it gets a little different difficult for women um you know there comes a time hopefully things will change but where we get into these sort of in between age ranges Mm -hmm. where there's not as much work opportunities for us so you have to think, well, this is what I'm doing in my 30s, but what what are thing what what do the roles look like once I jump into my 40s? Mm-hmm. What do the roles look like when I jump into my 50s and 60s and so forth? And how can I plan ahead? Because if you if you're only playing the quirky receptionist in your 20s and you haven't thought ahead about how you're going to transition into other things, it's like, oh crap. You get into your 40s and you're like, what am I doing? So that's why it's important, I think, to, you know dip your toe into other areas like voiceover or self-producing content or writing or things like that so that you have something else to go to when those downtimes happen. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I mean, I, that's kind of where I feel like I am right now as an actor. Like I'm 31 and I, mm-hmm. you know, went from playing like college roles to like young yeah. mom and there's like, there was no in between. It felt like, you You're know. like, wait a minute, yeah. I'm not even a mom. Why am I, why am I playing? <laughs> It's like, that's it. I go from student to mom. I can't just be like a young woman. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, that's why I love your, I've listened a little bit to your podcast and looked at your website. Like I love the idea of uh, a femme regard. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, that sort of problem or issue, I don't know if problem is the right word, but it is different for women in this business. Mm -hmm. It just is. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, yeah, we're, we're trying to write our own stuffs and Smart. I have like ideas of, of roles I'd love to play in that of women, historical women yeah, yeah. who haven't been brought up in, you know, um, that are brilliant writers and have such a fascinating, fascinating life that I would love to like play a part, a role. But so not even just like my own stuff, but we like can pull from so much of of great women leaders from the past that we like haven't even told their stories you know things like that I I love to bring to the forefront um and just thinking about like what you're saying about so yeah so I I, we're the mad crazy ladies especially (laughs) me to for for approaching this next project our first feature film Mm -hmm. um and we're trying to do ultra low budget because we really want to like not (laughs) trying not to do something um, that's, you know, one location, keep it small. Yeah. And, and, and so we can handle these multiple hats and do something that we really, a story, you know, touch a story that we're really excited about. And that being said, so I'm, I'm non-union and, and Tessa's can be, I'm but eligible, not yeah. yet mm-hmm. eligible. So if we make this project union, um, just cause I have no sense of what that would really mean for me as an actor, does that change like Tessa's status to where she has to, she has to join? It depends on the contract that you end up using, right? Which is based on your budget. So, but I have produced under, like I said, the new media project and the ultra low budget. And under those eligibility does apply. Mm -hmm. So you would become eligible, Carolina, if that makes sense. Because you're not eligible now. No, I have like one of those credits. One voucher. Right. So you, you would, yeah. One voucher. Oh, you have one voucher. Yeah. yeah. So you would yeah. be, you would Taft Heart, you would get Taft Heart lead. And so okay. then you would become eligible. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. And Tessa, you might want to, you might want to call and depending on which project you use, because like I said, there, there is some leeway with the ultra low budget where you can have uh, non union performers. Mm-hmm. But I think you'd need everybody to be. I don't know how I don't know how that works if you're already eligible. Uh-huh. You could have a mixed cast. 
You can have non-union, like Carolina, you could still be non-union. That's what I wanted to make sure, yes. too. Yeah. You could still be okay. non-union, and you could have other non-union people, and then union people as well. But I don't know how it affects eligibility. Okay. Yeah, that was... But you can have a mixed cast in some of these low-budget spaces. Yes. That was going to be my next question, because, like I said, like, I'm ready to join the union. If Like, that's what I think this project would then kind of force, quote unquote, me to join the union, which I'm fine with. But yeah, as far as, you know, Carolina or the rest of our cast or whatever, we were just, we weren't sure where they had to be status wise. or Yeah, no, depending, uh, like I said, if you're using the ultra low budget, no, you can go ahead and uh, have non-union actors in that. Okay. That's really good to know. (laughs) And I'm not sure about the spa because I've never worked under it. Okay. So that I don't know. Do you know about new media? At all, just because we're not it's sure. A, again, it de- new media yeah. depends on the project, depends on your budget, and depends on the project, right? Because okay. new okay. media goes all the way up to full budget to no budget. It goes all the way from oh, getting paid regular TV theatrical rates to deferred pay. Okay. Right, where you pay nothing unless the, unless the project makes money. Oh, that's what deferred yeah. pay really is. I wasn't sure. Yeah, deferred pay. So basically it's like uh, you get, you know, whatever the base rate is for – whatever you negotiate or agree upon, it has to be at least minimum wage. Um, But that pay is deferred until X, Y, Z that you make in the contract. Like the contract that we did for our low budget, I think it was uh, once it recouped all its costs and made, you know, $100,000 or something like that. I can't can't remember exactly offhand what it was. But those are the types of things that you can put into the contract. So it's deferred. And you only get that money or pay that money if those things come to fruition. And from what I'm like, I'm, I'm working on a, as a producer on another project and I'm kind of seeing the back and forth happen on this. I'm not going to reveal like what it is exactly just, but what I'm seeing is that the, you can kind of, and from what you're saying, you can kind of um, have like amendments or adjustments made to like fit your project then like you said if you you set the goal like not goal but the like the cap of where how much money needs to be accrued to then pay everyone like that's all the stuff that you go back and forth with um a representative at SAG correct yes or with your talent right because talent can negotiate for themselves as well right right so you, there's a floor that would be through sag after but then your individual talent can, of course, negotiate above above that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, sag after will guide you through this stuff. It's once you sort of get through the, like, just sort of start the process, everything becomes clearer as you go. But yes, there, you know, you can get all kinds of adjustments, waivers. But again, everything is really based on the budget. So once you figure mm-hmm. out the budget, that's the only thing I don't love about our business because it's really hard to predict budgets sometimes. I mean, budgets are great if it's like, this is the amount of money I have and this is what we can spend. That's Some, it. <laughs> but sometimes, yeah. sometimes it's a little fluid. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, mm-hmm. well, I bet if I make this much of my, mo- of my movie and then show it to people, then I might be able to get more money. You know? Right. So it's, I, I wish there were sort of like a build as you go kind of thing. And you can mm-hmm. absolutely transition from one project uh one contract to another like if you find that your budget is moving up or something changes or it sells a certain way um yeah. sag after will null the original contract and move you into whatever contract is most appropriate so don't worry about that that anything can be yeah. worked out that's really anything good. <laughs> can be worked out hi geekscapists the geekscape pod father jonathan here in may we lost one of our own Longtime Geekscape is Christopher Ellis, who was a friend and a part of our geek community from the very beginning. Chris even met his wife Sarah through our podcast, and their 2015 wedding seemed like a giant Geekscape party. Chris's final weeks battling in the hospital shed light on a huge national problem. The COVID pandemic has almost completely depleted our national and local blood banks. These supplies are used by thousands of hospitals to provide life-saving treatments to patients or to buy enough time for loved ones just to say goodbye. So for the next month and beyond, we're going to do it big in Chris's memory and do some good in the process. We're throwing a blood drive. Visit www.aabb.org to find a donation center near you or visit other blood and platelet donation centers like the Red Cross. And let's make things interesting. For the next month, take a selfie of yourself donating with the hashtag Geekscape Gives and tag your favorite Geekscape podcast. We'll pick some charitable Geekscapists to send prizes to and the podcast that gets mentioned the most 
will also get some cool rewards. I should actually cancel the podcast that gets mentioned the least. Can I do that? Whatever. The point is, go out there and donate some blood, tag a selfie of yourself doing it with the hashtag Geekscape Gives, and get others to do the same. We couldn't save our friend Chris, but we can do a whole lot of good in his name. Geekscape forever! Oh, but the thing about yeah, but the thing the thing that's hard about the ultra low budget and things like that is that you have to put a bond forward. Mm. So you have to have your money for your actors in advance. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that money secured because you have to pay it to the union. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you have to have that money doubled. Because Got it. explain. So you have to give a bond to the union, like you literally have to wire transfer them the money that's needed to pay the actors. Okay. So that money is in an imaginary sag after bank account to make sure you pay your actors. At the same time, you are paying your actors, not from that sag after account. Oh, right? shit. Okay. That, that lives over there as a safety net mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. say, hey, actors, don't worry. These people aren't going to skip out and not pay you yeah. because we have, right. we have money from them. It's almost like a security deposit kind of idea. Basically, yeah. yeah. So you have to have that money twice. Oh, it's yeah. awful. I, I, I wish that weren't so the case, crazy. but the fact of the matter is, like, actors get screwed over. You know, it's just it's just to protect us. And I, I understand it's like, well, I would never screw over actors, but there are people who do yeah. and will. And it's, it's for those people who want to take advantage that we have right. to have these protections. So you basically you want to think of having – your actor payment, you want to think of having it twice. Double. Okay. And that's so a important for filmmakers. Yeah. As yeah. accessible cash. Yeah. I mean, right? Because you're going to have to be paying them, but you can't pay them right. from that pot. Yeah. That pot's over at SAG after waiting for you to complete your project. When you complete your project and prove that everybody's been paid, they send it back to you. Makes sense. Right. With all like the payroll information and. Well, you're going to be. You're going to be. You have to get your own payroll company, right? You're paying right. people. Right? I was that was yeah. gonna be my next question. Like with the projects you've produced and done it through SAG, have you always um and is it like an a must to always go through like a payroll company that you hire? I mean, that's what I have done. I don't know if people have figured out ways to do it on their own, no, but um I, I don't know, but I, I've used a payroll company, unless it's deferred, mm -hmm. which I've done deferred projects that never made any money, Okay. so I never had to pay anybody anything, <laughs> and I never had to put any money toward the pot, yeah. right, because there's mm. no, it's not a thing, Yeah. right, because it's deferred pay. No, that's so, so great, like, for you to distinguish, because I'm sure filmmakers right now are wrapping their heads around, like, you know, they're not an actor first, they don't know, like, what that's you know, means exactly to right. hire a SAG actor and the security totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. Get it. Um, so, but on I'm those just... low paying jobs where there is essentially no pay, then you don't have to have that security deposit. Mm -hmm. Like for a, like the if you're doing the contracts. New, yeah. So like if you're doing the new, oh, okay. like if you're doing the new media, which is deferred pay, there's no, there's no security deposit. Oh, okay. That was that was another thing I was going to clarify. I'm like, is that for all the contracts? No. So, okay. but once if it's a paying contract, if it's the ultra low budget or above that, um, yes, you have to. Where actors are getting paid, they're they're yeah. due money uh, right from the get go. Yes, security deposit. Okay. It's a bond. Okay. It's a, I think okay. they call it a bond. I, I can't remember mm -hmm. exactly what they call it. Okay. Yeah. I guess my question is then, as a union actor, why would you want to take on a deferred payment job? To work, to work with people you love, okay. to do a project you believe in, to help an up-and-coming director. You know, I worked on John M. Chu's student film. Mm. I, you know, yeah. at USC, like, you know, you do it for the love of art, okay. right? The love for entertainment. You, you want to you make something you believe in it, or you believe in that person that's that you're working with. Mm -hmm. You know, or you just want to scratch the itch. Like sometimes it's like, ah, I just want to do something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's that. Yeah. You know, people, that's the, the sort of reason people say, well, I want to, I want to stay non-union because I just want to do stuff. You can do stuff in the union. Yeah. The same way. There's nothing that's going to prevent you from doing stuff. Yeah. 
I like that. Um, also, and just to clarify for our listeners that may not be familiar with all the different unions that exist in the entertainment industry, as far as like payment for actors, like in a deferred payment situation or whatever, that has nothing to do with the union status of your crews. Like, you know, your director right. doesn't have to be in the director's guild or any of that. Like, yeah, it's purely actors. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you might, you might have a union crew, in which case you'd have their contract. Right. You might have a DJ director, in which case you'd have their contract. But uh, each project individually uh, has its own contract within each union. So, like, you could be – that's why there's been so many non-union commercials, right? You'll have union crews, but non-union actors. Mm. But the opposite's actually true as well. I have been a union actor on a commercial shoot, and the crew's been non-union. Interesting. I've worked with a non-union, non-DGA director. Mm-hmm. It's bananas. Yeah. It's bananas, but the one that they just don't translate. Yeah. Right. Okay. One doesn't guarantee the others. Mm-hmm. I think that's something just, yeah, to keep in mind for filmmakers, because I know for me, when I think union, I just think like everybody union, but like, that's not necessarily the case. And when we're talking mm-hmm. about SAG, it is, that is purely the actors. So I think that's just Correct. a really good reminder for filmmakers. Yeah. And it, I, I hate to be a, a, a stickler, but it is SAG AFTRA as opposed to SAG. Yeah, you're right. Um, because we did merge, and I, I don't want to discount or our AFTRA legacy members, people that, you know, I actually was a member of both unions before they merged, mm-hmm. right? I did a lot of work in radio, which allowed me to get, which allowed me to work under AFTRA contracts. So I want to make sure we don't erase those people who wouldn't have fallen under SAG stuff. So SAG AFTRA. Yeah, thank you, actually, for clarifying that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Um, some people, I don't mind still calling it SAG. That's fine. But they're, you know, merging the unions was a really important thing. Like, I've been able to qualify for healthcare the last couple of years because they they merged them. And I, I wouldn't have been able to do that because my earnings were split. Mm-hmm. You know, I had so much radio mm-hmm. earnings and so much TV earnings. I, I wouldn't have made it in either one. So in order to merge those two things together, I've been able to qualify for for healthcare more easily. So I don't want to um, discount that in any way, even though I had no part in that. I mean, I voted for the merger, but I wasn't involved in the union at that time because I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know I should be. So Yeah. No, that's great. And that's really, I think that's awesome for people like yourself who do so many different things that, you know, that allows you to combine, quote unquote, all of those things to benefit yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. I, the project that you chose to do defer payment on, mm-hmm. was there a certain reason why, like, I guess every, every project is going to be different. I feel like as a filmmaker, yeah, you're going to have to really just, you just have to jump in. Mm-hmm. You just got to yeah. jump, right? Cause you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know where your yeah. project is going to end up. That's what's so scary sometimes, right? You just like, would I make money off of this? I want to believe that I would. Sure. And like, and I think that's where you have to like, I guess, really it's hard to, yeah, it's kind of hard to be for a fortune teller sometimes. Yeah, it's you very know? hard. But like I said, you can change contracts, right? If something, mm. if some, if it morphs from one thing into another, like the, the union will, will change the contract that it's under. It's like, let's say you sell it to a, I don't know, lifetime, mm-hmm. you know, movie, yeah. right? That's a totally different thing than if you were going to exhibit it just at festivals and like on the internet. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So it would move, it would move from, let's say the new media contract to um, the theatrical contract. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So, uh, but it might be, so instead of then might be moved into modified low budget or low budget or something like that. So right. I know you can't always predict. So what I would say is don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry about it. Just, just No, jump. thank you, yeah. Katie. Yeah. This is gold. I think um, this is really gold because you get, you get, you know, you think contract, this is final, you know? So I just, you saying that again, reiterating that it can be changed if your, your show does sell to a network and stuff. That is just so nice to hear. It's yeah, a relief. Get, like, it isn't, <laughs> it is get, a relief. Yeah. Things can get upgraded, right? Like there, everybody wants to make it work for everybody else. Mm-hmm. Right. So just, yeah. just figure out your budget, look at whether you're paying into um, look at whether you're going to do deferred or, you know, if it's under a certain budget and yeah. if you want to pay into pension health, it's, everything is just based on the money. Mm-hmm. But once you figure out your money, everything <laughs> is going to become a lot clearer and then just don't worry about it. Just get started under a contract. And if it needs okay. to change, it, it will get changed. Okay. 
Yeah, for, that's great advice. Thank you so much for that. That's that cleared up a lot really for nice. us, I think, personally, and I hope for our listeners, too. That's educated them a lot. So good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, Katie, thank you. You're thank welcome. you. Well, before we wrap up, too, I want to give you the chance to any, excuse me, anything specific that you want to promote or share with our listeners as far as social media, websites, anything to watch you on, all that stuff. I'd love to let everybody know that I am running for re-election for the L.A. local board for SAG-AFTRA, and I'm also running for the L.A. local vice president. And um, I'm of two mindsets of that. One is that uh, I hate it. (laughs) I absolutely hate – I hate it. I have to be honest. I really (laughs) hate it. I hate giving all my free time to the union. I don't know why I do it. But I think it's important. I'm good at it. I'm very good at running a room. Uh, I believe that our dues are not always spent the best way that they should be. And the LA local board uh, in the last few years has been really dysfunctional. Uh, Sometimes we'll spend an hour or an hour and a half debating something that passes with one objection or Mm -hmm. no objections. And that's our staff's time and our money uh, being wasted. Mm -hmm. And I... I believe I can more efficiently help run a room, which is why I'm running for Los Angeles vice president. Um, That being said, if you don't vote for me and I don't win, I'm okay with that. I'm exhausted. (laughs) I could could use the time to myself. I I do think that my own career has taken a bit of a backseat to my volunteer efforts. But I think, again... I just want us all to succeed. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not doing it, then who? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. I, it's my responsibility. It's all of our responsibility. So I'm taking my turn Mm -hmm. and I hope that my turn doesn't last forever. Um, but I'm taking my turn right now. (laughs) Yeah. And so if you want to vote for somebody who sacrifices herself (laughs) for the better of all of us vote for me and if you don't if you want to just give me some time off I'm okay with that too (laughs) but I I please vote for me please vote for everybody on the Unite for Strength slate um so that things can run a little more functionally in my opinion Mm -hmm. uh, than things have been running in the LA local room as of late where can they vote for you, love? Well, they'll get their ballots in the mail. SAG after will okay. send their ballots in the mail. They'll Perfect. come out um, the beginning of August, and they'll be due, I think, like September 1st, 2nd, or 3rd, right around there. Um, get your ballots in early. I know that voting can be a bit of a pain because you have, like, the ballots are huge, <laughs> and you get to vote for a lot of people, and it can be very confusing. So um, I understand that a lot of people just simply don't want to do it, but it this is your chance to have a voice in your union. And it's just sort of like, why would, you know, it's just like voting in our national elections Mm -hmm. or our local elections. Like that's your chance to have a say. So please vote, please, please vote. Um, Other things I've got going on. I, I don't know if I'll be back this season, but I recur on young Sheldon and um, I love everybody I work with there. So please watch young Sheldon. It's one of my favorite gigs. Um, and I, you know, you can find me on social media at Katie Von Till. I'm on all the things. I do audition coaching and for voiceover and on camera. If you want to reach out for me for that. But keep in mind, I keep a very low roster of people because I'm busy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, obviously, I donate a lot of my time to the union and then my own career. I just, I just want to take a moment to say thank you for your volunteer time. Oh, um, that thanks. doesn't go, I didn't want that to go without say because... Yeah. Um, again, I'm still learning more and more, and I'm so grateful to the guests that we've had on that really have been promoting the great, um, efforts and the importance of being union and what that really means in this space. And, and as on the filmmaker side, I hope they understand that better too. It's really there to help everyone. Yeah, I mean, we're all part of the same ecosystem, right? Yeah. Exactly. And exactly. If, and if one part of the ecosystem dies, we're screwed, right? We have to keep the yeah. whole ecosystem healthy. Mm-hmm. No, and so thank you for being a voice in that room. Um, and I just, I, I'm not in there, but I believe it. I believe that you are really <laughs> there to to make it better, more efficient, and, and just 
help the ecosystem as because like that is such an important I think distinction and something we should all like pay attention to because I hope you filmmakers don't turn it off on these actory episodes because it's there's just there's so much to to understand and I, I do think this episode will help clear up some of those connect like confusions about maybe the connections and how they work mm-hmm. with one another so thank you thank you yeah, Katie, for, the, for that the business pits us against each other in some way yeah like a, or it feels like it or it can feels feel like, like it. it yeah yeah it feels yeah. like it but that's a myth right it isn't really mm-hmm. we need everybody right right like I can't make something without a dp yeah I can't exactly I can't make something without an editor unless I can do all those things right and there are people who can do everything themselves and that's Great and wonderful and fine. But for the most part, you know, our projects are bigger than just ourselves. Right. The art it's part of the fun. Yeah. It's part of the whole, like, reason why we do it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't like, think everyone really wants to do all the things no, all and, the time. Jenna, and, like, no. Jenna, who, you know, mm-hmm. brought me to you guys, posted on her Actors Rise thing the other day, like, who's the who's the dream director or dream actor or dream person you want to work with? And my response was my friends. Like yeah. that's the dream. <laughs> so the dream. true. No, so yeah, true. Like, yeah. Like I want to work with my friends. I want us all to be making a living and, and supporting mm-hmm. ourselves and our families and working together. And um, if I could give you a lo- another like sort of piece of advice, like talking about the whole ecosystem. Please. Think about, Diversify. I love to use the word diversify. Think about (laughs) diversifying your network. What do I mean by that? We tend to network with our direct peers, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. People in our age range, people in our type, people who are doing the same types of projects that we're doing. And what I would say is try to expand beyond that, right? Like I have close friends in their 60s, mm-hmm. in their 70s. I have close friends in their 20s. Like, make friends with all age ranges. Make friends with people who do all different things. Like, I don't like horror, but I got a good friend who does horror, and she invited me to do a project, you know? Yeah. You, you just want to expand beyond your immediate circle, if that makes sense. Yeah, I love that. I think that. that's very smart, yeah. So smart, and I think it'll it'll surprise you Um, when you put yourself out there in your career, how that could help you, you know, but I think just extending yourself when you're Mm -hmm. aging, right. It's like, if you have somebody 10 years older than you and 20 years older than you and 30 years older than you, who is still working, it's a, it gives you, you know, a a role model that you actually can Mm -hmm. speak to. Mm -hmm. Right. I can't call Meryl Streep and say, how is it? Yeah. (laughs) How, How is it? acting now that you're an older lady you know I can't do that but I I can call my friends who are older gals who Mm -hmm. are still working in this Uh, business like the goal for me is to work till I die like I want to I want to love Katie I want to be going to auditions when I can no longer drive and somebody's got to get me there and I had to print my sides out in extra large print like that's the goal right the goal is to work forever because I do this because I love it I do agree that artists should be paid I'm not saying we should be giving our talents away for free but I do it for the love of it Mm -hmm. and I do it because I'm good at it yeah right Mm -hmm. So I want to do this till I die. I look at some of these actresses who literally work forever, and I'm just so inspired. I'm so inspired that they keep going. Yeah, agreed. I think, yeah, that would really help you, yeah, stay inspired, be inspired, and have a mentor. I think it's yeah. it's sometimes hard to find, but I love and that. Not, not I mean, just, or just, you know, it's like when we talk about diversity, inclusion, and inclusion, like representation on film, like... It, it relates to all that, right? When when someone with a with a particular disability sees themselves on film, they go, "Oh, I can do X, Y, Z," and it's the same thing as we get older. It's like, "Oh, oh, look, there are middle class, non famous actors still working and making a living. This is possible for me." Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. And one of my best friends in the business is ten years older, and you know, she's like. She's panicking, and, I, and I'm like, ah, I feel okay because you're all right, and you're 10 years older older than me. So as long as you're okay, I'm okay. Yeah. Like, this is weird <laughs> mental switch. It's probably not true, but um, but at least it makes me feel that way. It's like, ah, she's 10 years older, and she's still making a go of it. Like, I can do this. I can stick with it. Yeah. You know, because it's all about stick to If you don't give up, you haven't failed. Um, 
so what I would say to actors is never give up, but also don't wait, right? Mm -hmm. Don't wait to join the union. Yeah. Don't. If you can help it, if you've got the money and you're eligible, you're ready, right? Mm -hmm. Don't wait to make mm -hmm. that project, right? If you've got a great project and you've written it, get some money and make it. Mm -hmm. um, my, my girl, my, this last feature that I helped produce, you know, originally it was supposed to be a million dollar feature and then the yeah. pandemic hit and my, the creator, uh, the uh, writer and producer and star actress was like, you know, I can, I can wait for this money to come and it may never come or I can ultra low budget this thing and get it off the ground. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the smartest thing to do instead of like shooting for the stars, right? Particularly like, you know, your first practice is just shoot to get it made. Yeah. Just make it. Don't wait because you're getting older by the moment. Yeah. And life is getting Girl. shorter, but yeah, I know. <laughs> life is getting shorter by the moment. Well, like, it sucks. I do like I do have to factor that in yeah. into like writing the scripts that we do. I'm like, okay, yeah. like this is the longer I put off this project, I may no longer be this young starlet. I, I, have, a project, <laughs> I have a project that I've written with a friend that um, we're trying to sell right now as a pilot we know we can't play ourselves anymore. Mm -hmm. We're too old to play. Like, it's based on our lives. It, Shit. The character's name is literally my name. And I'm like, I can't, I can't play this anymore. Yeah. Like, when we started developing this, I was, it was for that age, right? And now I'm like, well, you know, we've been del developing this for a few years and now I'm too long in the tooth. Like, I can't, I can't play that lady. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, don't wait. But like, if this don't is, wait and just do it. Yeah. Don't wait. Just do it. You'll figure out the contracts. You'll figure out the money. You know, just don't panic so much. Like, everybody's trying to make this work. Nobody's trying to punish you. Mm -hmm. Right? Nobody's trying to catch mm -hmm. you doing something wrong. Like, they might catch you doing something wrong, but then everybody's <laughs> everybody's going to work to fix it. Yeah. We really are that's all nice in this together. To hear. It's an, yeah. It's an ecosystem mm -hmm. that we all want to thrive. So, and if you get somebody who isn't helpful, hang up and call back. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other big piece of advice, the one big piece of advice that I would give to actors right now is um, get an Ethernet cable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just For plug, better connection. Plug your dang, <laughs> plus plug into a dang Ethernet cable. She sounds like a shout out to Mike at the network studios. He's been telling me that from day one to get one. Oh, but why, yes. why for actors? Why? Because Just, you have live Zoom auditions and callbacks. Mm, mm, and I cannot worry, tell yeah. you how many friends, Wi-Fi, glitch, yeah. doesn't work. And you, Ugh, you gotta, you gotta, yeah. gotta, gotta have an Ethernet cable. That's smart. That's something I would not have thought about. <laughs> so thank you for that. Yeah. So a lot of people think, oh, well, I don't want to run a cable through my house or, the, you know, my, my router is way on the other side. I bought a hundred foot cable and I wind it through my house yeah. to wherever I need to be shooting. And then I roll it back up and put it away when I'm done. I was just going to say, it doesn't have to be permanent. You just need it for those moments. So yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So just get something like really long. Cause you never know. It's like, sometimes they want you to shoot in your self tape space, which you see behind mm -hmm. me, my voiceover booth behind me. Sometimes they want you please shoot in your real kitchen. Right. So you want something that's long enough that you can move it wherever you need it to be. Yeah. So depending on your space, yeah, you know. That's so smart. Yeah. Do that. No. It's it's a it's a blessing and a curse sometimes these. Yeah. <laughs> the new the self tapes and yeah, everything. I know. But yes. Yeah, so don't wait. Make friends of all ages. Don't worry so much about the contract. You'll figure it out and get an ethernet cable. Love it. <laughs> vote, vote for your union representatives and show up. Yeah. Show up to something. We really are all trying to help each other. I, there's this myth that like actors are cutthroat and stab each other in the back and all this stuff, but that's never been my experience. I, I know that when I moved from, I actually found it harder in New York in doing the musical theater world to find that sort of sense of community mm -hmm. and ways to help people. I feel like oh, people in yeah. Los Angeles have been just so incredibly welcoming and wanting to help each other and wanting to collaborate. Yeah. Yes. We love living here for that reason. Well, thank you ladies for having me. I really, this has been a fun conversation. Yeah. This and has I'm, been great. I'm just really inspired. So thanks. Thank you. Oh my God. Yay. <laughs> thank you, babe. Thanks for listening to Femme Regard podcast. If you like what you hear, tune in every Friday for more tips on the filmmaking business and insightful conversations with industry professionals. We can only grow with your support, so please subscribe, share, rate, and review. You can also join the Fem Fam on Patreon. For more on us, check
check us out at femregard.com. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 